in order for you to change, you're going to have to be greater than the conditions in your environment. And every great person in history knew this. They believed in a future that was already so alive in their mind that they began to live as if that future reality was happening in the present moment. And they share the same brain as you and I. So then to change then, being greater than your environment, means then you have to be greater than the circumstances and conditions in your world. And as long as you're not creating anything new in your life, every person, everything that's already reflected in your brain, also then is an experience that has an emotion connected to it. And we can say then, when you're thinking equal to your environment, you'll keep reaffirming and creating the same environment. And finally, to change is to be greater than time. And if a person's living in the familiar past, that is called the known. If they're living in the predictable future, that is called the known. And to change then is to get beyond the programs of the future and the conditioning of the past and settle into the sweet spot of the generous present moment. That means then you're going to have to be greater than that line of time. And there is a skill and a formula that teach people how to be greater than their bodies, to be greater than the conditions in their environment, and to be greater than time. So in order for you to change, you're going to have to cross a river. And the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before. So here's the old self, and here's the new self. And the moment you decide to make a different choice or to do something differently, you just stepped into that river of change and get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. There's going to be some unknowns. And most importantly, you're not going to be able to predict the next moment. Now think about this. We just said that in order for you to change, you have to be greater than your body. And the redundancy of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking conditions the body into the past. So the body has been trained to cling to what it knows. And now you're taking it out into the unknown. And the body says, I don't like this. I can't predict the future. And the body starts influencing our thoughts. And all of a sudden, we start to have these sub-vocalizations, this chatter in our head, these voices that tell us, start tomorrow. You'll never change. You're too much like your mother. It's your ex's fault. It's your boss's fault. This doesn't feel right. And most people listen to that thought as if it's true. And one of my greatest moments in my life is when I realize just because I have a thought doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So a person may say, I want to change something about myself. Today, no more blaming, no more complaining, no more suffering, no more self-pity. And now they're disrupting that chemical continuity. And all of a sudden, two hours goes by. And after that two hours, the body starts craving the conditioning of those familiar chemicals. And it's the body then that's influencing the mind for the body to return back to the same state of being. So then, going from the old self to the new self, is the neurological, the biological, the chemical, the hormonal, the genetic death of the old self. And in that place, that void, that place of uncertainty, is actually the perfect place to create something new. And people may say, I'm crossing that river of change. I can't predict my future. And the answer is, the best way to predict your future is to create it. What thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain and put your attention behind? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate in one day in one lifetime. 
The latest research in neuroscience says that when you close your eyes and rehearse an activity mentally, that your brain does not know the difference between what's going on out there and what's going on in here if you're truly present you begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's literally a map to the future. You are priming your brain into the future. And if you keep doing it over and over again, firing and wiring, that hardware will become a software program. And who knows, you just may start acting like an abundant person. You may start thinking that you're healthy why? Because you installed those circuits. Now here's the hard part. Can you teach your body emotionally what that future will feel like before it's made manifest? That means you can't wait for your wealth to feel worthiness and abundance. You can't wait for your success to feel empowered. You can't wait for your new relationship to feel love. You can't wait for your healing to feel gratitude or wholeness. You can't wait for the mystical moment to feel awe. That's the old model of reality, of cause and effect. Waiting for something outside of us to give us relief from the emptiness and pain we feel inside of us. And some people will spend their whole life living in lack, waiting for something to change. And if you're waiting, then you're not creating. The quantum model of reality is about causing an effect. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you start embracing the feeling of empowerment, you are stepping towards your success. The moment you're in love with yourself and in love with life, you will create an equal. And the moment you start feeling grateful and you start feeling whole, your healing begins. And the moment you are in awe of life, you will have a mystical experience. Now that's causing an effect. And so from going from one state of mind and body, the old self, into a new state of mind and body, a new self. And crossing that river means there'll be new opportunities, new experiences, new events in your life, because you're no longer the old self. So the biological model of change then is breaking the habit of the old self and reinventing the new self. It's pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections no longer signaling the same genes in the same way and learning how to signal new genes in new ways. Now, what I want you to know is that you already know how to do this. Every one of us has done something great in our lives. And what happened when we decided to make up our mind to create something or to do something differently? We ask ourselves the question, is it possible that I can be healthy? Is it possible that I can have the job of my dreams or the relationship of my dreams? And what would that look like? And when you ask that question, you turned on the creative center in your brain called your frontal lobe. And think of your frontal lobe as the symphony leader. And it has connections to all parts of the brain. So what it does is it naturally calls up different networks of neurons that are associated with that question based on the things you've learned intellectually in your life and the experiences that you've had as well. And it begins to seamlessly piece them together. The next thing you see is an image or a picture in your mind, and that's called intention. And now you are selecting a new possibility of your future. When you saw that image, you saw that picture in your mind, the next thing you know, you started to feel the emotion as if you were living in that future reality in the present moment. And we could say then, the moment you started feeling the emotion, the thought became the experience in your mind. And you were giving your body a sampling or a taste of the future. Now here's what you did when that happened. You started thinking about all the choices you had to make and you wrote them down. You started to think about all those experiences that would get you to that vision, all those goals. 
And every time you wrote those goals down, you felt more of those feelings. And you kept reviewing them in your mind so you can put your conscious mind on what you wanted. And then you did something really brilliantly. You started to write down the thoughts that you wouldn't let slip by your awareness unnoticed. Thoughts like, I can't, it's too hard, I'll never change. Those are thoughts that if you respond to them will cause you to lose sight of your future. And every day you reminded yourself of who you wanted to be, and every day you reminded yourself of who you no longer wanted to be. And then you started seeing synchronicities, opportunities, coincidences beginning to show up in your life. And that's the universe telling you that you're heading towards a new future. And when it finally happened, it was no longer about the event. It was about the fact that you created it. And so then the side effect of that is we become more whole, more present, more loving, because now we're living life less in lack. There's only three things that stop us from that vision of the future. The body, the environment, and time. Number one, the body. Most people say, I didn't feel like it, or I don't feel like it, I'm tired, I have a headache. And they use feelings as a barometer for change. And when you use feelings as a barometer for change, you'll always talk yourself out of possibility. The environment. I have these people to see, I have these places to go, I have these things to do. Their environment seduce them back into their present reality. The last one is time. There just wasn't enough time. And people shrink back into mediocrity, and they find people that do the same. And then they use each other to reaffirm their addiction or their conditioning into victimization. So then when you're at that lowest level in your life, where they don't want to keep their social engagements. They could actually see themselves through the eyes of someone else. And in neuroscience, that's called metacognition. And now they're beginning to observe their thoughts. They're beginning to notice their behaviors. They're looking at the feelings that they were living by and saying, I didn't even know I was suffering. It just feels like how I always lived. And the act of observing those states of mind and body means they're no longer the program. Now they're the consciousness observing the program. And that's the first step to change.